So before I wrap up this unit by summarizing the material I've covered, I want to take a step back and consider a bigger um, and more difficult question. What do power laws mean? If we observe a phenomenon is described by a power law, what does that tell us? Well, can address that question on a number of levels. It certainly tells us something empirically. If we have a phenomenon that we have good reason to believe is well described by a power law, that tells us that the um, uh, system is scale-free in some sense. Power laws are the only scale-free distribution. Scale-free distributions are power laws. So um, that's an interesting statement. Uh, you've certainly learned something about the system under study, and it's a little bit unusual because typically in science we think of things as having typical sizes. A tomato has a typical size, a person has a typical height, a building has a, has a typical capacity or something. But for uh, these power law situations, they're fractals. There isn't a typical size, they're described by a distribution of different sizes. So that's something you can certainly say if you see a power law. Additionally, if we have something described by a power law, we know it has a long tail. That the probability of large events decays more slowly than exponential. But it's important to know that not only power laws have long tails. Other distributions, log normals and things like them, also uh, have long tails. So if you know that something's power law, you know that it has a long tail, which means that large events are not, um, are unlikely, but not unthinkably unlikely. Um, but merely observing a long tail does not tell you that something is a power law. Power law is a smaller class of systems than just those that are um, long tailed. So what I've described so far are purely empirical statements. They're statements about a pattern that we would observe in phenomena, in whatever we're studying but they don't tell us what the mechanism for that phenomena might be. Where did that come from? Why are we seeing this power law? And the reason for that is, as we've seen in this unit, there are many different ways of generating power laws using both optimization arguments and using a variety of different um, probabilistic arguments, probabilistic models, so that um, Seeing something as a power law does not specify a mechanism, and indeed there can be very different mechanisms that generate a power law. So um, observing that something is a power law doesn't really give you a clue as to what caused that power law. So um, that's not cause for despair. We just need to use additional information about the system. If it's um, a looking at popularity in a cultural system, then maybe we would, we would make some reasonable models or guesses for how popularity might work. We might have to think in more specific terms about how a technological system like a website or the internet might grow. We might need to think more about how evolution would distribute species among genera and so on. So, um, so again, a power law is certainly a, a useful and interesting thing to observe, but by itself, it does not specify a mechanism. So that's an important thing, I think, to bear in mind when uh, studying power laws that arise in complex systems.